Happy 10 year anniversary to what many fans consider Pokemon Peak. And today we're going to try and answer the question, does it live up to the hype? To answer this, we need to look at what it's praised for. Ash, Satoshi Ketchum, Serena, I, I mean all the companions, of course X, Y, and Z, including the evil team. Let's start with the companions. First, let's talk about Clement. This electric type gym leader has a great dynamic with Ash, but as a character, I can take or leave him. He's calculating, a little shy, and also the first companion that wasn't a gifted athlete. He builds gadgets and cares about them a lot. Like, dang, why are you making me cry over a robot? He takes being a gym leader seriously and has a whole training arc where he leaves the group to prepare for his battle with Ash. This battle is amazing and feels weightier than the typical gym battle. This battle is amazing and feels weightier than the typical gym battle. Okay, maybe I do like Clement. Then we have Bonnie, Clement's little sister who arguably has the biggest role of any companion, but we'll get to that. She's more outgoing than her brother and they're really sweet together. Now, she really shines when Squishy comes into the picture. She forms this strong bond and connection with it that helps to restore its faith in humanity. She's also a modern day Brock, which I love. She's less creepy, but just as invasive. Yeah, we're pro Bonnie here. And Serena. Wow, did Serena sweep the nation. Several of them. She has a clear and defined goal, unlike Misty, who was like, I don't know, water? She also has definitive character development, and I think is relatable to a lot of people who are finding their way. A trope that isn't getting old anytime soon. She's cute, a little spunky, and willful. I can't help but wonder if she would be as popular without Amore shipping. The answer is no, by the way. And Amore shipping, I'll just say, isn't my favorite Poke ship. Wait, don't click off yet! I see the appeal, it's the most canon for sure. I'm just in the camp of people who thinks it was too definitive of her character. I also wasn't so crazy about showcases. Contest! 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 As a character, I loved Serena, but I guess I would have liked to see her stand on her own two feet more. And then there's Ash. If you want a cool, shonen, well-designed, crafty, suave... Okay, I see why people adore this version of him. Ash is an incredibly competent trainer and leader in this series. Then obviously there's Greninja, who basically broke the internet as far as Pokemon goes. I feel like even Pikachu sort of takes a backseat here to let the frog shine. My problem with Ash here is he's just kinda... sterilized. He rarely gets into spats, is very much a role model, and just isn't as spunky. He doesn't need to be sassy with his friends, but since we know it's a part of his character, to me it makes their dynamic feel kind of impersonal. Though overall, as a group, they're fun, they're entertaining, they have a great dynamic, they're just a good time to watch, even if I would personally rank them below the OG and DP trios. Next, the battles. Here is where XY steals the show. As far as consistency, XY has the best battles of any series. The introduction of the shifting camera angles adds such a dynamic feel to the battles. One of my personal favorites includes the first fight between Ash and Wolfric, where he's on a devastating losing streak after Sawyer. Which of course leads to that moment, the drama. And back to Sawyer, fun fact, he has the same voice actor as Pikachu in the sub. Looking up to Ash inspired Sawyer to grow. And he did, albeit way too fast. Ash is an inspiration to him the same way he probably was to a lot of us. So, how was the Kalos League? Ooh. Now of course, I have to address this. This had the fandom riled up and up in arms like nothing I've ever seen. I'll say it, in retrospect, I'm glad Ash didn't win this league. If not just for the fact it made his world championship victory that much sweeter. And Alan, or Elaine? Alan? Is probably the most fleshed out rival, even getting Mega Evolution specials devoted to him. We see him be angsty and misguided, even joining the evil team. In a really powerful moment where Ash gets through to him using Takno Jutsu. While Paul is more memorable, Alan is his own, fully fleshed out character with a lot of love put into him until Journeys. Then we get to XYZ. Regarded by many as the best season in the franchise. Everything comes to a head with Team Flare. I mean, they are literally attempting genocide. As well, everyone gets to play a major role. Of course we have Ash teaming up with Alon to take on Lysander and stop the Flare gang. Bonnie assists Squishy in getting one of the most epic finishes in the entire series. I mean, look at this. Serena goes on a quest to rescue Chespin, and even Clement has his own mission to recover Prism Tower, finishing with an iconic and climactic finale with all the Kalos gym leaders in an epic moment that this series has not often replicated, as our team helps to save the world and culminates with Ultimate Chad Ash. So what do I think? 
Pokemon XY knows what its fans want, and it delivers in every aspect. People wanted Ash to be cool and competent and he exceeded our expectations. Shipping sells and we got that in spades. XY delivers on everything you'd want in this anime, despite some flaws that may prevent it from being my favorite series, and some things that I think other series do better. XY delivers on everything you'd want in this anime and absolutely lives up to its reputation as one of the best Pocket Monster series.